Tonight, President Trump is downplaying the meeting between his son, along with other campaign officials, and a Russian lawyer. But lawmakers on both sides are taking it very seriously. Senator Chuck Grassley uh, says his committee is sending a bipartisan letter to Donald Trump Jr. requesting that he testify before the Judiciary Committee. Lawmakers want to know about his connections to the wealthy Russian family, Emin and Aras Agalarov, who were allegedly behind the meeting, and whether a phone call ever took place between Don Jr. and Emin Agalarov before the meeting, as the emails might suggest. Now, during the exchange, Agalarov's publicist, Rob Goldstone, says, Hi, Don, let me know when you are free to talk with Emin by phone about this Hillary info. Don Jr. responds, Rob, could we speak now? Goldstone writes, let me track him down in Moscow, what number he could call. Don Jr. replies, he can call his cell. And then Goldstone replies, okay, he's on stage in Moscow, but should be off within 20 minutes, so I am sure can call. That was at 3.43 p.m. on June 6th. Nearly an hour later, Don Jr. replies, Rob, thanks for the help, raising the question of whether a phone call might have taken place during that time. Around 24 hours later, Goldstone sent another email saying, Emin, Ask that I schedule a meeting, you and the Russian government attorney. I believe you are aware of the meeting. So how else would he be aware of the meeting, one might ask? The attorney for Donald Jr. told CNN tonight that his client has no recollection of a phone call. That attorney is Scott Bauber, and he joins us now tonight live from New York. He represents two of the men mentioned in Donald Trump's Jr. Jr. Emails, emails. Thanks very much for taking the time. My pleasure. Thank you. Scott, I want to first just bottom line ask, did your client, Emin Agalarov, speak to Don Jr. over the phone either before or after the meeting with the Russian lawyer? Uh, at some point before the meeting, yes, but uh, likely months before. Uh, he, he has no recollection of any conversation by telephone or otherwise in this time frame mm -hmm. with Donald J Trump Jr. I either. He doesn't believe it happened. So when you say months before, was this during the campaign he spoke to him? No. I mean, he has, he has no specific recollection of, of any conversations on this topic. He certainly spoke to Donald Trump Jr. over the course of time uh, during the, the couple of years uh, before this time frame in which they had known each other, but nothing about this issue. So they did have a phone relationship? Uh, they had spoken on the phone at points in time. That's correct. And do you know how many times during the presidential campaign that happened? I have no idea. No. And what about his father, Aras? Because he, he had a relationship with his father, Donald Trump. Did they speak during the campaign? Uh, again, nobody has any recollection of any conversations between Aras Agalarov and Donald Trump Sr. during that time frame either. Mr. Balber, give us a, a better sense of what your client's association is with the Russian lawyer who Goldstone called a, a Russian government lawyer. Yeah, let, let, let me address that and let me, let me put this in a little bit of context if I can. Uh, the, the, the story here, the theory, is that the, the Russian government was in possession of some highly confidential, super secret, devastating information about Hillary Clinton that would affect the outcome of the election and change the future of the free world. And they debated how should we convey that to the Trump campaign. And someone said, let's get Rob Goldstone, a music publicist, to convey the message. And then let's get as many people as possible involved in this conversation, and let's do it by email. It, it, it just makes no sense. But, but, and but the answer to your question to, is... To be fair, he, if, if I could just interject there, to be sure. fair, Goldston, yes, set up the meeting, but, but this lawyer uh, is, is a very well-connected lawyer with, a, with, a, with an effort, a history of challenging U.S. sanctions against Russians ac accused of, of human rights abuses, etc., the, the, the Magnitsky Act. Uh, so so these, are, these are big issues, and she was at the center of fighting those issues. She, she didn't just come out of nowhere. Well, I mean, it, it is true that she has been a vocal opponent to the Magnitsky Act. Uh, that's a fact. It, it is not the case, as far as we understand, that she works for or was associated with the Russian government in any capacity. She is a Moscow-based What do you base that on? Lawyer. What, what do you base that knowledge? What, what, what do you base your certainty on that she had no association with the Kremlin? Well, what, what, I, what I believe I said and what I meant was that we had no understanding or reason to believe that she has an association with the Kremlin. Mm -hmm. She is known as a private real estate lawyer in Moscow. She has been a private real estate lawyer who, over the course of time, has in, been engaged in some transactions for Mr. Agalarov's business entities, and that's how Mr. Agalarov Sr. knows her. There's no evidence anywhere from anybody that she has any association with the Russian government. 
as far as I know, it's made up. If somebody has a basis, I, I would love to see it because I haven't seen it yet. So just to be clear, did your clients have any information? Were they told by anyone that the Russian government was in a, a campaign to aid the Trump campaign or meddle in the U.S. election? And even if they weren't aware of it, did they ever direct Rob Goldstone to say that in this email to Don Jr.? The answer to the first question is absolutely, unequivocally no. Neither Mr. Aras Agalarov nor his son Amin Agalarov ever had any knowledge or understanding of any effort by the Russian government to try to uh, be involved in the U.S. campaign. That's one. And two, no, it's not the case that either of my clients had any involvement in some of the preposterous things that Mr. Goldstone said in the emails that you just uh, showed on the air a minute ago. Do your clients have any connection or ties to Vladimir Putin? Uh, no, other than the fact that he's the president of their country and, and Mr. Aguilarov Sr. received a, a high-level award from Mr. Putin uh, a couple of years ago. Well, but, a not insignificant high-level award awarded to people who, who, who President Putin considers important people. So, so are, are you saying there is no relationship or, or are you saying it was not a particularly close relationship? I, I'm saying it is absolutely the case that Mr. Aguilarov is an important uh, person in the Russian Federation. He's a very successful businessman. Uh, he's involved in lots of activities which have put him in high prominence in the Russian Federation. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a, a personal relationship with Putin any more than any other powerful, influential person has in any country with their leadership. Let me just circle back to what you told us in the very beginning, that months before this meeting, there was a phone conversation between your client and Don Jr. I was speaking to the attorney for Don Jr. who said they're going through a factual examination, going through all the, the past emails and, and phone logs to make sure there weren't, weren't any other conversations. Have you done the same? And, and again, I just want to circle back to whether or not there were any conversations after that meeting as well. You said there weren't any in that time frame with, during the email exchange, but anything after? Uh, we, we have no reason to believe there were any after or any before in this, in this time frame. We are doing the same analysis. We are trying to look back at, at information to determine whether or not there was, in fact, any phone calls. But this was uh, a year ago, and okay. there is no recollection of any phone calls having taken place on this topic. Last question for you. The president's nominee for FBI director said if a person offered to t information from a foreign government as sort of oppo research, right. as this is being dubbed, that that person should seek legal counsel. What kind of counsel would you give your client? <laughs> What, what counsel would I give my client? My, my, my client has no, no need for counsel because they have no involvement in these issues other than setting up a meeting. But just generally, what kind, of, what kind of counsel would you give your client generally? In, in, in what context? Not, in, the, in, not, your, not the Agalarovs, but generally. Uh, I, I'm not in the mood to give free legal advice to the world. Thank okay. you. Mr. Robert, thanks very much for taking the time.